Hello Great Tops, my name is Priscilla Sanelani, you may simply call me Miss Priscilla and in this video we are going to be looking at preparing you for your examination that is coming up on the 20th of May. So if you're writing accounting on the 20th of May, this is the video for you. What this video hopes to do is to give you that last minute preparation. I'm posting it today only because I know that most of you are writing mathematics on Friday and on Monday, but after Monday, immediately on Tuesday, you have accounting to write. So if you are one of those people, I just want to start off by saying I am sorry, I understand you, I am here for you, and if you need anything, leave it in the comment section below so that I can be able to help you. But this video in general is going to make sure that I help you with any questions that you may have, but most importantly, those last minute touch ups that you need to do. So if you are here wondering to yourself that this whole time you haven't been studying and you're at the point where you are left with only a couple of days before you start writing your accounting, what are some of the things that you can use this limited amount of time that is left to study in order to maximize your chances of being able to pass even though you haven't been studying this whole time? I'm not judging you for that. I'm just saying that you are trying to do the impossible, but I'm here to make th that impossible a little bit more possible for you. So this video is going to outline to you things that you need to make sure that you absolutely touch up on. My prayer for you is that you see this video as soon as it is posted. Unlike seeing it the night before you are going to write, because I know that's, that's when some of you will decide, let me search the internet for a video that can help me because you're panicking the night before and that's the day that you are landing on this video if this is you again also to you i am very sorry i wish you have found me sooner but we 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 live and we learn right we, but if you are here make sure that you have looked at the scope for accounting it's already posted and i'm going to link it somewhere here make sure that you have looked at that scope you are comfortable with everything that's on that scope and you also use this video to help you close that gap that you have in your studying otherwise if you need to set up one-on-one -on -one sessions with me to be able to cover up and make sure that you maximize the time that you have left before your examination start the email of how you can reach out to me to do that is going to be displayed here on the screen below make sure that you send me an email please don't let it be at 10 o'clock the night before you're going to write. If you're seeing this video as early as today, make sure that today is the day that you send me an email. Because if you send it at 10, I might respond, but even if I do respond, what is, what can we do? But most likely, I won't lie to you, I will not respond at 10 o'clock the night before, not because I don't want to, but because at that time I will be dealing with the students who will be in my WhatsApp, helping them with the last minute preparations the day before they're going to write. So it won't be because I'm being snacks and I don't want to reply to you, it will be because I'm literally preoccupied so make sure that if you are seeing this video as early as now you are sending that email and you can do an act of kindness and also share it with your friends who may need it otherwise let's get into the video now if you need one-on-one -on -one help with anything that we have covered in this video on this subject in general we have a visual program that can help you with just that from anywhere in the country all you need is an email and a whatsapp and we are able to give you personalized help for a monthly fee this will cover full lesson recordings as well as notes and study materials for any of your subjects that you need personal help with. This will include some of the subjects that are not even covered on this channel. For example, ch subjects like history. You will soon see our full subject list. We will also cover scopes for those specific subjects as well as attempt past papers together but what's most important about this virtual sessions is that you get full-time communication meaning from the hours of 8 o'clock to 4 p.m you are able to send in your questions even if you send them at late between the hours of 8 and 4 you will get replies to your questions you will get to go back and forth and get full-time attention on any question that you do have 
even if we have to repeat something over and over again you get to have that personalized help that is helpful to you as you can see with some of the examples there we get to exchange scripts we get to exchange question papers and you get to show me what it is that you wrote and you even get markings for your questions to see how you actually do perform when it comes to a specific question or a specific subject grade 10 to grade 12 as well as those who are upgrading and rewriting those are the full list of subjects that we do offer if you are interested in any of this for you to be able to get your prize quotation it is very simple all you have to do is email me on that email address that you see there when you do email make sure that in the subject line you write your name and say name and then in the body of your email that's where you will tell me your grade and the subjects that you need help with it can be one subject or it can be a mixture of subject hands we are saying that you need to email for you to be able to get your price quotation now because this is one-on-one -on -one, it means that it puts a limit on the number of people I can take Per month so I'm going to be limiting it to 10 students per month so make sure that you email to secure your spot we kick off with the top five financial statements adjustment you need to know before you go write your examination. This adjustment relates to both the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position. First, you need to know your rent income or your rent expense. There are different ways to calculate rent income or rent expense and you need to be comfortable with either one of those that you can receive. It is usually one of the most challenging calculations that you will find in your paper especially preparing for the statement of comprehensive income but they can as well affect your statement of financial position under the trade and other receivables or trade and other payables depending on what the adjustment is then your second calculation or your second adjustment that you need to be comfortable with is the calculation of depreciation using both the, the cost method as well as the diminishing balance method now when it comes to depreciation you will see that usually they will give you an asset that has can be divided into three ways the old asset the sold asset and the new asset you need to be able to know how to separate those calculate their depreciation individually and then get them back together another thing that you should get comfortable with when it comes to depreciation is know how to deal with an asset that is fully depreciated by the way every single one of these adjustments that i'm mentioning right now all in the top five i have made individual videos on them on this channel all you have to do is go to the videos tab and look for them or alternatively you can go to the playlist tab and look for accounting grade 12 playlists and you should be able to find these calculations the third adjustment that you need to worry yourself with is director's fees. We know that with director's fees, what they usually do is they pay them differently or they will pay them for different months and they will calculate or they will force you to calculate their salaries or their payment individually. So they will tell you there was the first director who has been with us from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. The second director was with us from the beginning of the year up until six months into the year. And the other one was a new director who we only employed three months after the year had already started so make sure that you know how to deal with such scenarios number four we are looking at interest expense interest expense will be at the bottom of statement of comprehensive income but it will also be in current liabilities in the statement of financial position similarly with income tax it will be the bottom of statement of comprehensive income it can be in current liabilities or current assets in the statement of financial position Next, we are looking at top three financial statement notes that affect all of your statements, including the statement of cash flows. At first glance, these ones may look like they're the notes that will only affect the statement of financial position. But if you have been going through your past question papers, you would have noticed that you would be looking at a question that has to do with a cash flow statement. And that question starts with requiring you to complete a retained income statement. So let's go through the three notes to financial statements that you need to know the first one is the fixed asset note now fixed asset can also stand as a standalone topic on its own however in your paper one you most likely will find it as a note 
they may give you a note that is incomplete and they ask you to complete the fixed asset note this is the tangible asset note so you need to be able to know how to complete it or how to calculate the missing figures in the fixed asset note Number two is the ordinary share capital. The ordinary share capital note is usually popular in the statement of financial position. But I have also seen questions where it appears with the cash flow statement just like retained income does. So when it comes to ordinary share capital, you need to be able to be comfortable with how to calculate your repurchased shares as well as your additional shares. But I think what's tricky with this one is knowing how to calculate the average price price that you are supposed to calculate the number of shares with so make sure that you are comfortable with calculating that lastly we are looking at a retained income note with a retained income note it is again still important to know how to deal with your repurchased shares or rather the portion of the repurchased shares that comes into retained note if you know about repurchased shares you know there's a portion that goes into ordinary share capital and the portion that goes into retained income Speaking of cash flows, let's also look at the top five cash flow calculations that you need to know. With the statement of cash flows, you need to be able to know how to calculate your interest paid. Interest paid is one of the calculations that we deem easy as far as the income statement, the cash flow statement is concerned rather, because it is a straightforward calculation that doesn't have too many rules, unlike your dividend paid and your tax paid. So getting to dividend paid, with dividend paid, you need to know how much of the amount counts for a cash outflow as far as the current year is concerned because we need the amount of dividend that is paid so for example an amount like a final dividend will not be a dividend paid because we usually declare it and pay it the following year so as far as the current year that we are in is concerned what would be the amount of dividend that is paid so there is rules regarding that so make sure that you go get comfortable with that similarly we have tax paid at number three income tax paid takes it a step further when it comes to rules because there are are different rules that apply if we owed SARS last year or if SARS owed us and also what happens if SARS owes us this year and what if we owe them this year. There's a different way with, that we deal with it in terms of cash inflow and cash outflow. So go make sure that you get comfortable with those rules. Know when what it means when SARS owed us last year, meaning that SARS was a debtor, or when we owed SARS last year, meaning that SARS was a creditor. So go get comfortable with that. It's not as easy, as simple as possible as just taking the tax amount and putting it in your statement of cash flows. We are looking at the cash that is coming out and the cash that is coming in so you will need to know what needs to be subtracted and what needs to be added at number four we are looking at working capital first of first and foremost you need to know what even is working capital working capital involves inventories debtors and creditors so you need to know when we have an inflow of inventory or an outflow of inventory and inflow of debtors or an outflow of debtors and inflow of creditors and an outflow of creditors you need to know what does it mean if the amount of inventories increase is that an inflow or is that an outflow similarly that applies to your debtors and your creditors then lastly the last calculation that you need to be comfortable with with their statement of cash flows is the net changes in cash and cash equivalent the trick here is to know which amount subtracts which one so get comfortable with that as well lastly we are going to look at the top five theory questions that you are going to need to be able to answer in your examination when it comes to theory, I feel the need to always let you know that there is going to be a lot of theory in your question paper. And the one thing you cannot afford to do is to not answer those theory questions because it will come back to bite you in the back. So make sure that you do 
answer your theory questions as far as you possibly can. Use most of your logic as far as it is concerned. Think about this whole thing as if you were the business owner and this is your own business. How would you deal with some of the situations that they are throwing at you? Or how would you interpret the numbers that you are looking at? So the first thing that you need to be able to answer and when it comes to theory in accounting is... Give comments of your financial indicators. To do this, you need to be comfortable with your areas of analysis because they are the ones that tell you what those financial indicators that you are looking at are basically trying to say to you. So if you don't know your areas of analysis, it becomes difficult to comment on a financial indicator because you don't know what that financial indicator is for and what its purpose is. Then number two, we are looking at interpretation of financial statements. This is you being given a list of balances that could come from a trial balance, a statement of financial position or a statement of financial income. You need to be able to look at those numbers and be able to tell what decisions were made by the management of the company you need to be able to tell that oh they decided to pay their investors and therefore they were not able to give bonuses to their salaried employees or they decided to buy a new building and that's why they couldn't pay dividend this year so you need to be able to look at a financial statement or a list of balances from a financial statement and be able to determine the decisions that were made throughout the financial year that's what we mean by interpretation of financial statements then the third thing you need to be able to do is to be able to give your audit opinion when is it qualified unqualified and when is it a disclaimer then you also need to know your financial costs. these are simply accounting terms that you have been seeing throughout your study of accounting so for example can you define the gap principles so what is materiality what is prudence what is a current liability what is a current asset what is a shareholder what is a director what does IFRS stand for so that's what we mean by accounting concepts so you need to be comfortable with defining such words so when you're studying question papers and you bump into them take note of the ones that appear the most and make sure that you are able to define them then lastly, we are looking at internal control recommendations. So similarly, like the number two of interpreting of financial uh, statements, you need to be able to give recommendations over the decisions that have been made by a business. So if they tell you that somebody stole money, what is the recommendation that you can give? That's what we call internal control this could be where you get most of your marks because the answers are not strictly based on the memo they are just relying on how relevant is your answer how much common sense is in it I have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below